Okay. Um, in the last video, we had developed this formula. And this is for the situation where we have an n number of distinct objects, and we're going to select away k number of them, and we're asking ourselves, how many different ways can we do that? Well, the order matters, and there is no replacement, and this is our formula. Now, one thing we should comment on that probably we should have uh, clarified before is the fact that zero factorial equals one. And if you look in a lot of the textbooks, they'll say it's defined to be one. Well, that's not really true. If you take calculus, eventually you'll learn something called the gamma function. And when you study the gamma function, you learn more properties of factorials. And when you learn those extra properties, you see that this indeed is true. It's a general property of factorials, actually. It's not just a definition. And if you want to see how that works out, if you go to the website, digital-university.org, and look in the calculus section, and under the calculus section, look under integrals, you see where they have beta integrals and gamma integrals. Look in the gamma integral section, and you see where we show that this is true. It's not just because of a definition, it's because of the more general properties of uh, factorials. But we bring that to your attention now because we know that if we have n number of distinct objects, if we select n of them, doing it one at a time, of course, without replacement, you know, the total number of ways of doing that is n factorial. Was well, that consistent with this notation, if we have p and n? So we have n number of distinct objects. We're going to select away, eventually, all of them. How many different ways can we do that? Well, if we use our formula, that's equal to n factorial divided by n minus n factorial. That equals n factorial divided by 0 factorial, which is 1 which equals n factorial. So our notation then is consistent. So this right here is our more general permutation formula. Now, what we're going to do in this video and in the next several videos, we're going to solve some problems using this formula. And for lack of a better term, we call it partial permutation meaning that you have an n number of distinct objects but we're only going to deal with a selected k number of them. And the first problem that we're going to consider goes like this. Suppose that you have say eight engineering books. And say that you have six math books. And from these two selections, you're going to choose seven books to place on a shelf. And the order of the books matters. And let's say that to get these seven books, you're going to choose from the engineering books, you're going to choose four of them, and from the math books, you're going to choose three of them. If you do it like that, 
and again the order of the selection matters how many different ways can we choose our seven books to place on the bookshelf so here we have to consider we have two tasks task one is select the four engineering books and task T2 is to select math books then you consider the entire task that is doing T1 and then Performing task T2. How many different ways can we perform task T1? Well, we have a total of eight books, and we're going to select four of them. So the total number of ways that we can perform task T1 is this. What is the total number of ways that we can perform task T2? Same thing, of course, except these are the numbers. The total number of ways that we can perform tasks T1 and T2 is this. This is the total number of ways that we can perform task T1. This is the total number of ways that we can perform task T2. To perform task T1 and T2, the total number of ways of doing both of them, according to the fundamental counting principle is this times this. So let's see what will this give us. Here we have 8 factorial over 8 minus 4 factorial well that's just 4 factorial times, and we miswrote this, it should be 6 factorial or 6, up here, 6 books to choose from and we're going to take away 3 of them so here then, this is going to be equal to 6 factorial divided by 6 minus 3, or 3 factorial. Multiply these two expressions together, and that will be the total number of ways that we can select the 7 books for the orders of the books matters. So. Let's see, this is 8 factorial, and 6 factorial, we can write that like 6 times 5 times 4 factorial, there's our 6 factorial, divided by 4 factorial times 3 factorial, and 3 factorial is 6, 3 times 2 times 1. So, this will cancel, this will cancel, and the number we get is just 8 factorial times 5, and that comes out to well, over 200,000, I think, if you do the arithmetic, it's something like 201. 600, something like that. Um, do the math if you want to check to see if that number is correct. What we want to concentrate on here for this video is kind of like the, the procedure that's involved. Again, realizing that we have two different tasks to consider. Selecting the four engineering books and selecting the three math books. We have to ask ourselves how many different ways that we perform each task. And in simple form, the number of ways to perform the first task is this. The number of ways of performing the second task is this. So to do both tasks, T1 and T2, this is now where the fun fundamental counting principle comes into play. That total number of ways is equal to this number times this number. So now we have to start doing the number crunching, so we write this out, which is 8 factorial divided by 8 minus 4, 
four factorial. Here we have six factorial divided by six minus three factorial, which is three factorial. And from here on out, it's just simply crunching the numbers. But, okay, that's it for this video. Um, come back and join us for some more videos, and we're going to look through some more of these partial permutation problems.